hello and welcome to my channel please like share and subscribe if you like this video and thank you all so much for watching thank you thank you thank you to my day ones twos and threes thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in that means well thank you so very much i appreciate you all and welcome 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 this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only so everything is alleged some is not and the fair act use is in my description box, y'all. So let's get to it, y'all. Let's get to it. First, I'm going to say happy Wednesday. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. Please stay safe and all that good stuff. Please stay aware of your surroundings. And y'all, please watch the company that you keep because it just may save your life. Okay, y'all? So I want to get into the story that's coming out of Florida, y'all. This right here is a doozy right here. And I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. Um, this is a learning experience for people that's out here trying to find love online and all of that stuff going to these dating sites and stuff like that. Um, they are truly not safe, y'all. They're really not. Okay. Um, so half of the time that you go into these dating sites, they put up pictures. It's not even of themselves. It's of somebody else. Okay, y'all. This is what these dating sites do. So you have to be careful with this type of stuff. A lot of what you're hearing and they're saying, um, a lot of people get conned out of money on these dating sites too. Like, like lonely women, they'll start sending these guys money. And lonely men, they be sending these females money. It don't even be their picture. It'll be somebody that's, you know, totally the opposite of the picture that they put up. Okay, y'all. It, it might not even be the same race. Okay, y'all. Because some people is good at changing their voices and all that stuff. Okay. So you have to truly, truly, y'all, be careful when you're calling yourself trying to date somebody online, okay? But I want y'all to listen to the story because this, this story right here was a doozy. Oh, it was a doozy. So um, it's coming out of Ex Escambia County, Florida. This is where it's coming from. This is what the news is reporting. Um, they're saying that a woman and a man was arrested on multiple charges after a man was, you know, they put paws on him. Um, they also took a, a knife uh, to the throat. And then they threw him off a bridge. This is what they did to some somebody, according to the sheriff department. Okay, a deputy with Esco, uh, which is Escambia County, was on patrol on October the eighth, just uh, look just after eight a.m. So I want y'all to pay attention to everything that's coming on the news. I, I got another story coming out, and it's a doozy. I, I told y'all yesterday, day before yesterday, but I told y'all I had to work on it. I just about finished. I'm still winding up those pictures for that other video but that video is in sequence to what's going on right here i want y'all to pay attention to everything that you have been you know reports that's coming out in the news and all of that stuff has a lot of gematria in it y'all a lot of stuff in there don't, don't make no sense that you'd be wondering like is this stuff planned from the start y'all um the eight and the eight represents the infinity okay the infinity links i talk about this all the time on the page so this off duty, well, he was on duty. Um, I guess he was on duty. He was parked in a parking lot. This is what they were saying. Okay. At October the 8th at 8 a.m. He was parked in the Cumberland Farms parking lot. While in the parking lot, a man covered in drat, you know, he had blood all over him, y'all. And his face was swollen and he approached the deputy while he was in his car. Okay. According to the arrest report, this is what they're saying. The man was barefoot and barely able to stand up. And he had large amounts of dried up blood on his face, neck, and hands. And had deep lacerations on the front side of his neck. The man only spoke Spanish. Okay, he didn't even speak English. Requiring the deputy to attempt to communicate through Google Translate. Okay, the man told the deputy that a woman stuck a knife in in his in his neck y'all and then a man another person so she had somebody else there with her to, i guess to meet up with him or, or was on standby when she met up with him see this is what they do they'll have couples and stuff like that or it'll be a street associates they'll get somebody to you know get online and you know especially if it's a pretty girl that's down for the hood she get online and put up this stuff and then these guys will rob them but they actually tried to take this man out. You know what I'm saying, y'all? They put paws on him. And then she was the one 
who took stuck the knife in his neck after probably talking to this man for probably days or however long months probably until he met up with her and this is what she did to him y'all people out here is heartless y'all and y'all have to be careful you really do it says um let's continue and then he said that's when they threw him off a bridge and stole his car according to the report so they they carjacked him too it wasn't enough that he was already you know heartbroken about the fact that that um you know, somebody that you've been talking to, you thinking that you're getting close and excited to meet and stuff. I'll, you know, I don't know how long they were all speaking. I'm going to see if that's going to come up in this story right there. But, and then to get robbed and all of this stuff, it's, it's bad enough. But then the extremes that they went through to actually get rid of this man. And to be honest with y'all, um, God was with him, to be honest. For him to still make it through all of this stuff, get through over bridge and all that stuff, because this man could, it's a possibility he couldn't even swim. So it was like, you know, um, it was meant for him to come back and tell this story so people can wake up and smell the coffee when they're out here trying to date, y'all. Um, the deputy took 10 photos before the man was taken to Sacred Heart Hospital detailed questioning could not take place at the time because the man had to go straight to surgery y'all at 2 p.m that day the original deputy and another deputy who was used as an interpreter arrived at the hospital to talk more with the victim the man allegedly told deputies that he had met a woman through facebook about five days earlier oh they've been only dating for five days y'all he he know he was desperate to go meet somebody but at the, it doesn't matter, to be honest with y'all. It could be five days. It could be five months. It could be five years that somebody can string you along. There are, there are women that they met people online and they have cleaned out their bank accounts. So um, it's a lot of this going on. Y'all got to stop being desperate out here for real. He said the woman told him she was having money problems. That's the first thing that comes up when you meet somebody online. When they start saying they got money problems, uh, run fast. Because it's, it's, it's a scam. It's a setup. And she said that she needed food, at which point he offered to take her to buy food. This is what they're saying. He offered to take her to go get some food. And this is what she did to him. Somebody that actually was trying to help you. Lord, this, this system is messed up. Before he met the fee female, the victim went to a restaurant to cash his paycheck. Just say it. He then went to meet the woman, later identified as a 25-year-old Natalie Fonseca, something like that, at a gas station. The arrest report said the victim told deputies he bought drinks for her children. Oh, she brought the kids. Did she bring the kids too, or did she just, he bought drinks for them and drop it off? Okay. Oh, okay, here you go. And then drove the two back to her home. Once at the home, the victim met a man, later identified as 31-year-old Nafis Reynolds, who Fonseca claimed to be her uncle. Oh, Lord. The victim said they then went to his home and eventually they left. Okay. After leaving the home, the victim said Reynolds began beating, putting paws on the victim in the head. So he started the 31 year old. Okay. And cut his neck multiple times with while Francica drove. Okay. So the guy was sticking him while. She was driving. But at first they said she stuck him too. I hope they get it right. Because yeah, they did say she stuck him too. Fenisca also allegedly told the victim he was going to pass away that night. She's a cold hearted one, y'all. She told him he going you out of here. After he got to come and help her and her kids. <sighs> y'all, I tell y'all, people will use your, use your kindness for weakness. This is why I say all the time. People be thinking that I be pushing, you know, um, you know, to be mean to people and this and that. No, I push to keep your guards up. Because the ones that's the nicest ones is the ones that they go for. These end up being the victims. The ones that's really nice and that somebody can just lead you astray easy. and Or you just love helping people. They use that against you. And you have to put your foot down nowadays. You have to. This is why I be telling people on this page. That when you're out in the street, don't let people just walk up on you and all of that stuff talking about they, they, they don't have the directions. They don't know where they're going. Um, they have at, at the gas station, they have maps. 
they usually have maps at gas stations. You can go right to gas station and get a map and find out where you are or get instructions from somebody at the gas station. Or they can go to the police station and find out where they need to go if that's the case. Okay, y'all. Um, don't let people just walk up on you in the street. Because nine times out of ten, the majority of people that's doing this stuff is this is what they come as. Somebody innocent and they come to you and you end up getting carjacked and all of that stuff. So you have to be careful. And protect yourself before anything, okay? If you want to make it back home to your kids and your family and this and that, you got to put that first over helping somebody now. Only thing you can do, if somebody going to walk up to you, um, uh, tell them, you know, keep you, their distance and tell them you'll call the police and send the police up there to help them or something like that. Do not, y'all, fall for the okie doke. I'm telling y'all. Because you will be sorry. You will be sorry, seriously. And let me f finish reading this. Okay, let me finish. Um, when they arrived at the bridge, the two allegedly forced the victim out of the car and they put paws on him some more. Reynolds then grabbed the victim and threw him over the Excambia River Bridge. After throwing the victim in the water, um, they stole his car. Both of them stole his car. Deputies later found the car engulfed in flames. They set the car on fire, y'all. Boy, oh boy. It says the victim swam a little ways before reaching a riverbank and passing out from exhaustion. The next morning, a woman in a boat saw the man and brought the man to shore. He then walked from where he was dropped off to the um, Cumberland's parking lot where he saw the deputy. Both Francica and Reynolds were arrested and charged with attempted felony, you know, taking him out, um, carjacking, armed robbery, and kidnapping, y'all. This is what the report is saying, y'all. This is so sad on so many levels, y'all. And this is why I tell y'all all the time to be careful. And she looked like she mean. She do look mean right there. But at the same time, if you take that little face and put some makeup on and this and that, which this is probably how she met him on Facebook because she probably was all dialed up on there. But in actual reality, she probably got some kind of, you know, um, street pharmacy problem because usually when you have those little gashes in your face like that, that is street pharmacy use, what she has in her face, okay? Uh, for some reason, those type of different types of street pharmacy stuff would eat at your skin like that. And that's what, probably why her face looks like that okay y'all but stop meeting people online y'all i don't care what race you are this guy was spanish and he went and met this woman thinking that she was you know he was gonna help her and she didn't have no feelings these are demons i keep telling you all the time that these are demons a lot of these people um they don't have their bodies anymore they're they're ran by demons to be honest with y'all OK, and especially when they're doing, you know, a lot of street pharmacy stuff. This is how demons can enter your body easy and get you to do even more stuff that you probably wouldn't normally do if you wasn't on the street pharmacy stuff. And another thing to do, drinking too much, sippy, sippy, sippy will get you sloppy, 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 and you'll do things and don't even remember it the next day. OK, so you have to be careful. OK, y'all, you have to be careful. Don't let just anybody, you know, you meet online you know, let you think that, you know, you don't ever feel like you really know them, okay? Because like I said, they can even give you their full name and you can check out their name, see if they got records and stuff like that. And it might not even be their name. So y'all be careful out here because this right here could have went so to the left, this man could have passed away. And they probably thought he was. If you didn't, you know, put paws on him the way they put paws on this man and then stuck him that many times, all in the neck and everything. And then threw him over a bridge. They thought he was gone. This was like a ghost coming back, but he never passed away. Do y'all see how some people is so strong? And to be honest with y'all, them putting him in that water might have slowed down. Um, I'm just saying the bleeding. It might have slowed. It might have helped by them putting him in that water. This is sad. This is so sad on so many levels. But y'all be careful. And stop, you know, chancing y'all life just meeting in random people. And thinking that they on the up and up. Because um, 
it's so much fake phoniness that's going on out here and you thinking people is nice and this and that you you have this in your everyday life you can be close to somebody and overnight you don't really know that person that person that you've been hanging around with can run into somebody else and flip the whole script in your whole little life. And you'll be like, dang it, I thought that was my sister. I thought that was my brother. Not real sister and brother, but people that you call your sister and brother. I'm saying that. you be thinking that you're that close to somebody. And then that person will run into somebody on the street that don't like you, that could be in your family, whatever, and it'll flip. And all of a sudden, you and that person ain't even talking no more. And you're like, what happened? We didn't have our spats before, but why now? And you don't understand that it's something deeper in the surface going on. People will work you like that. And that's why I say you got to be careful with everybody that you are trying to be nice to. Sometimes you just have to put your foot down. And there's some people out here that you just, just, you really hate being mean to them. And not being mean, but you're trying to protect yourself from some drama. But it's people out here like you just want to be around, but you just can't because every time you get around that person, that person bring you down. And they'll try to bring you down in a worse way. And you don't have nothing but love for that person. But that person will try to try to hit you where it hurt. And they'll try to go in on you and you will sitting back like, wait a minute, I just finished. We was just hugging. We was just bad each other's stuff. And now you're trying to ruin my life like this? So if people in your family and people that you didn't grew up around or in your inner circle will do this to you, what do y'all think that people will do that don't know you? That's probably hooked on street pharmacy stuff and all of that. Y'all got to be careful. They're not going to tell you online that, oh, I rob people. They're not going to tell you, oh, I'm hooked on street pharmacy stuff when you're meeting people online. They're not going to tell you I'm, uh, you know, attached to a street association. But when you go over there and meet them, that's when you find out or they come to your house. You And that's another thing. You can't be going to people's house. You cannot be certain areas you go into. You can, you, you know, this person will tell you that they ain't dating nobody and this and that and that and this. And they know people on the, and there's people on the block that's probably talking to them. And you go to their house. It's so many people that be on the news that went to somebody's house and got taken out on a car or this and that going to meet somebody. You have to be careful about that stuff. You cannot do it. Seriously. And if you think you want to meet, if you think somebody is nice, if you think you didn't check them out and they're on the up and up, if you didn't pull up the ID or whatever, it, where they just showed you their ID and then you pull up their record and that's them and that's on there, and this and then that, still take extra precautions for going to meet people, okay? And I ain't saying stalk people, but if you call yourself, yourself been talking to somebody for a while and they live in a certain neighborhood and you know the address, it don't hurt to ride through there to see if street associations is hanging out. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't hurt to double check stuff before you even, you know, meet up with this person and make sure that that area is not bad, that they don't have a lot of street associations hanging out, selling street pharmacy stuff, or it's a gang of people sitting on the porch all the time at this person's house. This are these are signs that you could be about to get set up. So it doesn't hurt to ride through and just check for yourself to see. Not even if you're on a date or not with that person, but just slide through there and check the neighborhood out. And you can go to Google and you put people addresses in and you can tell what kind of street associations in that area and stuff like that. Just it don't take that much to check stuff out before you just go running yourself to somebody's house. Because that might be the last time you went to that person's house. For real. And it doesn't matter what you're going with. Some people just, they, they want to take all of what you got. Maybe they don't just want you to buy the kids something to drink or some some food. They might want your whole check. Just like he did. Went and cashed his check and went and met up with her. And she had this guy there. And this is probably her boyfriend. This is probably her boyfriend. But she told this man online that this was her uncle. Do y'all see how people play games and how it's so important for you to stay aware of your surroundings and everything? And not just the guys, females too. If you're talking to somebody online and they, they telling you where they stay and all of this other stuff, check the area out before you get to just running over to people's houses. Do a background check on somebody. You, you can pay for that. If it's a couple dollars, pay for it. If it means you, you know... Your life. 
But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think about this. This is sad on so many levels that they actually tried to take this man out. And he wasn't doing nothing but trying to help this woman. But like I said, the first signs of something bad is somebody start begging you. When you meet them online, that goes to show you, okay, that it's more to it than them just coming to meet with you or when they come meet with you they want something out of it you know when you are, are dating somebody you shouldn't want anything out of it and they shouldn't want anything out of the first date you know i'm just saying y'all if you're going to meet with somebody in a public place and go out to dinner with this person go meet and go out to dinner if you pay fine you just went and you know had company with this person whoever gonna pay gonna pay and you go your way and they go theirs until you get to really know this person and make sure this is the person that you are actually talking to. But going to their house and all of that stuff is a no-no for any kind of first dates like that. You want to be seen out in public with other people before you get to going and trying to hang out with them privately. Okay? Anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments section. I thought this was really sad, but at the same time, thank God he made it. And he was able to get these two off the street. So they won't do this to somebody else. Because I got a feeling they've done this a lot. This seemed like it came really, really easy to them. And then they set the man car on fire. So they really thought he was gone. I bet they were surprised to find out he was still alive. I told y'all God works in mysterious ways, don't he, y'all? Okay? But let this be a learning experience for the people that's dating online and meeting people on Facebook and all of this other stuff. And, where, you know, these websites for dating and all of that stuff. Let this be an example for y'all. This is not what you do. And if you're going to do it, do it safely. There's no reason for you to be going to this person's house and them to be coming to yours until y'all actually get to knowing each other. If she can't take an Uber, even if you got to pay for the Uber, Uber her to the, to the um, not for the state, to the hotel, but Uber her to the restaurant where you're going to meet her at. Just tell them you ain't, you know, you don't know them like that. You don't feel comfortable coming to their house, but you will pay for the Uber to drop them off. Drop them off. Have your dinner and have an Uber take them back if that's the case. But for your own safety, you never know what's going to happen. You can pick somebody up and they can have weapons in their purse and stuff. They don't need no sad kicks on the side sometimes. Some of these girls as grow up in the neighborhood and around people that they are ruthless. And this is what they do. So you just have to be careful, y'all, with everything that you're doing. But anyway, y'all, please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thank you all so much for watching. Peace. Wait a minute. I got to let it go a little bit more, y'all, because it said 22, 3. You know, I don't mess with them numbers. Okay, here we go. <laughs>